Hey guys, uh, welcome to a very special video episode of the Linux channel. Usually I take uh, various uh, practical sessions in my desktop and then uh, you know sometimes I, I do uh, take uh, whiteboard sessions uh, whereas in this episode uh, it is going to be quite different and I am going to do some sort of live research so that uh, and as well as some uh, demonstrations and uh, so that uh, I can kind of uh, cover a specific topic about uh, you know bandwidth the way the data transfer happens between a higher bandwidth to lower bandwidth as such, you know this is a kind of part of research I was involved for more than a decade in terms of uh, writing my uh, network optimization uh, project and as well as uh, I work with uh, various uh, you know client uh, solutions and and uh, architecting products and so on as such. so I got whole bunch of uh, things that I can show you I got some uh, uh, stack of these uh, funnels as you can see here so before I uh, kind of start my whiteboard session let me just uh, show you some of the gear I got it ready for this video episode and I got also a sort of bucket of water where in which I have put some amount of uh, red colored fountain penning so that uh, it acts like a sort of uh, you know, contrast so that uh, it is uh, well uh, captured by the camera so that it is not so transparent unlike water assets so apart from that I have some uh, safety gear uh, like the safety goggles and uh, some sort of you know industrial uh, rubber gloves and then I got some uh, teacups and I got some paper towels and and a few more stuff as well. so before going into the demonstration part uh, let me just uh, explain the situation what happens is usually when you have a network you know when you have a LAN network it may be probably around 100 Mbps or 1 gbps you know typically what happens is whenever it is uh, connected to an internet or a uh, dedicated van link you know the entire uh, there will be some sort of convergence of this entire bandwidth so essentially what happens is there is going to be a sort of bandwidth drop and you know effectively this is what you are going to have your uh, internet bandwidth whereas uh, you know essentially this is what is going to have your uh, LAN bandwidth as such. So this is your LAN and this is going to be your internet or your WAN network as such. So sometimes it can be your corporate or dedicated WAN network or sometimes it can be just a public internet or sometimes it can be a VPN over uh, internet as such. So let it be any case as such. And sometimes uh, it may be a case for a home user. I mean you just have your home you have it something like this connected to the internet whereas uh, there are cases uh, if you have uh, uh, multiple offices and it is a corporate network you know you may also have a case like you may have a corporate LAN you know it can be say site or office A and then it may have you know 1 Gbps WAN network and then it can have you know something like you know 20 to 30 mbps uh, or something like that it is terminated as uh, it's a uh, you know van link or internet link let us just assume it is say you know 50 mbps so you know and they may have some uh, remote offices so let us just assume uh, they have somewhere around the three branch offices so what we can do is we can just assume this is site B and then they may have say for example this is some sort of oil rig it can be an oil uh, uh, refinery company or something like that and uh, it may be a sort of uh, you know oil rig which is uh, placed on an ocean and it is getting some sort of you know satellite connectivity so what happens is each side it depends what is the speed of the network uh, termination they have done so it may be around say in this site it may be 20 mbps and in this site it may be some sort of uh, um, say like you know 10 mbps link or something let's just assume a case like that I mean I just don't want to really uh, compare with uh, some sort of you know real-time uh, uh, deployment as example so it is going to be part theoretical and it is going to be you no know, part research with the way I'm going to do some 
live demonstrations so what happens is there are cases so assume all these officers are connected in one or other way so there are cases where in which uh, you know strange things will happen in this scenario you know whenever you download any data from you know the main you know site a to this oil rig you know it is limited by this 10 mbps network and vice versa same time what happens is anything which is downloaded any sensor data or you know some kind of data which is downloaded from this oil rig to this you know main office it is going to be again real limited by this uh, 10 mbps link so this is going to be the bottleneck and at the same time anytime you are downloading or transferring data from you know site b to site a so it is kind of rate limited with this 20 mbps search. whereas uh, in case if the site a is connected to you know public internet you know they may get say let's assume the entire uh, 50 mbps uh, bandwidth as such so you know this is what is going to happen and uh, it is quite strange i mean uh, yeah, this is actually a case uh, where in which i was approached uh, by you know a couple of cto's and even a ceo of a company where uh, they have some unique cases like that and also there are cases where uh, you know people wants to download a huge uh, um, legal uh, uh, movie files which are uh, at a volume of around uh, a uh, couple of TVs or something like that to their uh, Dolby servers or something like that. So this was a case where in which I have seen with you know couple of customers where sometimes uh, it is uh, quite you know viable uh, to just uh, ship the hard disk rather than you know <laughs> downloading the entire uh, movie file. So this is not something I'm talking about uh, you know some kind of a DVD rip or something. This is uh, really a genuine uh, traffic. It is a legal genuine traffic uh, where uh, you know the movie file digitized movie files are pulled from the main server and it is stored in the main uh, theater uh, uh, servers and then uh, you know it is going to get played back as such. So the challenge is huge. I mean it is going to be at uh, at the, um, at the volume of uh, several uh, TBs or it can be something like that. So the challenge is high even uh, it is not going to solve even if you have a link like 50 Mbps or 20 Mbps. It is going to take multiple days to download these kind of data and uh, it is not a question of optimizing your WAN links. It's a question of you know, limitation in terms of uh, basic physics and uh, these files are like you know extremely high quality uh, video files as one can understand and uh, in case if you are downloading and if the connection is broken and again it is another problem altogether to solve so quite often what happens is every time you visit uh, some kind of uh, you know van optimization uh, providers uh, you know demo videos or something you know these uh, commercial uh, solution providers will uh, uh, take videos about uh, how they optimize uh, the data and other stuff and apart from that uh, if you kind of uh, compare these videos essentially and you know more or less everyone talks the same and uh, how they kind of uh, optimize the van data and other stuff but the problem remains the same and this needs you know some amount of ground level research and it is somewhere you need to understand how QoS works and uh, sometimes uh, there is no job of you know QoS uh, to solve these kind of unique cases I mean here we are talking sometimes a case like it can be a dedicated channel only to you know download these kind of high volume files and, and it is not uh, going to have any other data and uh, quite often uh, anytime you visit a, you know van optimization product uh, videos of commercial van optimization providers uh, they always talk about a case like you know tcp and how you know tcp uh, is optimized and how the traditional tcp is not going to address your bandwidth needs and what is the uh, uh, kind of changes they are going to do in their product to cope up with this and you know uh, things like that they just discuss about that so let us for this uh, video episode you know let us uh, uh, assume it is not you are sending anything like you know a specific case i mean i just want to do a general research 
you know let's just uh, assume you are dumping some amount of udp packets raw udp packets and it is not something like a three way handshake you know any time if you think about a file download scenario you know you may have a huge file and uh, somewhere at site b you are you know downloading this file essentially it is just a one directional data i mean you are just going to push data from this end to this end i mean it is just one one directional uh, data you know so you know this is what happens uh, an obstacle in terms of doing a ground level research in this topic and many people don't understand the way the convergence happens usually these things will happen at your you know router or your wifi routers or you know uh, your isp router in case if or a cp device so essentially these things happens in devices like this you know one side it may accept your uh, uh, you know lan termination which is 1 gbps or 100 mbps the other side it is going to connect to the main internet so what happens is essentially you know if there is going to be uh, some amount of loss of packets every time uh, there is some amount of congestion in this direction at the same time you know every time uh, there is some amount of data received you know there is going to be some amount of starvation as such in the you know other direction because this is like you know you have a huge bandwidth left at this side whereas you have very narrow bandwidth left over this side so this is exactly the reason i got this stack of uh, funnels usually i just uh, have this uh, two sets of funnels i mean i just uh, bought this recently one is for uh, uh kitchen you so that i can use it uh, for any edible uh, products and uh, and uh, this is for uh, any kind of uh, bathroom supplies and i can use any anything which is toxic and uh, it is not getting uh, you know uh, used for any you know uh, uh, you know edible purposes or you know things like that so what is the thing is i was just interested uh, let me just use this as a tool you know in further down in my video and then show you a live demo so when you compare these you know networking devices the essentially problem happens is something like this like this funnel so what is happening is you have a huge bandwidth at one direction and then it completely tapers and narrows it down towards your uh, lan network or your internet network as such so i just don't want to represent the uh, i just even uh, you know did uh, some kind of animated uh, video but uh, i felt uh, let me just do a real demo so that uh, let me just not talk about uh, you know some sort of conceptual theories and stuff like that you know one thing you have to bear in mind is uh, you know the data which you analyze in the device or your uh, linux system or kernel level or you capture these packets in a user space with wireshark you know it is all going to be conceptual level and you need some sort of debugging tools and you need some network uh, networking debugger tools and stuff like that but at the same time you know these are not full proof in terms of understanding the core essential problem of this context as well as uh, you need some inspiration by seeing some real physical things you know this is what it really matters so i was just uh, doing some amount of research in this subject for more than a decade and i just thought it is high time you know let me just shoot once for all as proper video to cover everything about it so what happens is uh, this is the kind of you know problem happens so essentially if you see you know this kind of almost you know represents something a situation like this you have you know one site which is like this and you have another site which is like this and you have another site which is a different you know bandwidth level as so essentially this is what something happens and i want to cover something very very unique you know since i do uh, research and at the same time i do uh, worked on uh, kernel level uh, networking stack and i have also uh, seen uh, how you know, qas uh, routines are written in the linux kernel Uh, uh you know network stack and uh, other uh, third party and as well as open source networking stack you know quite often you know you can uh, compare it almost a structure like this you know you may have some way the packets will be received and the other side you may have some sort of a networking stack it will also have its own rx and tx module so you can imagine this is almost like your rx module which is you know receiving the packets and it is uh, getting sent into 
another module which is receiving these packets and then uh, what essentially happens is this is going to have some kind of you know exit point so this may ki kind of directly connected to hardware layer or else uh, there can be some sort of you know intermediate buffers which will come into the picture this may be the you know dedicated uh, QAS let me just open this link so that uh, you know, let me just explain it better yeah so you can just imagine uh, you know anytime there is some level of uh, you know user space data or something like it can be even a routing context like this you know something like this so what happens is when you get the data you know it is going to get processed or else it is just going to get received and some amount of you know preliminary um, uh, uh, how to say preliminary uh, you know validation is done on the packets you know in a case like say for example if it is a router it is going to check its checksum it is going to check its routes and other stuff so once everything is through it is going to be passed in qos uh, layer in case if the qos modules are set it is going to have its own delays and stuff like that so you can just imagine uh, you know almost like data passing from you know one funnel to other funnel also. so here something else happens and there will be some delay and there are certain packets which gets priority certain packets which will get least priority and stuff like that. and finally this is going to be our device driver ring buffers of skb and or near to device drivers i mean you can just imagine so this is what it represents and finally it is also going to have something like a buffer structure where the packet drop can happen at any layer i mean what happens is if there is so many packets which are arriving and then it is not able to go out you know the packet drop may happen at this layer and then in qos again if there is some amount of stagnant packets are getting accumulated you know packet drop can happen at this layer and at the same time if there is <laughs> some sort of hardware uh, congestion or something the packet drops can happen at you know even in ring buffer layer so this is where the complexity starts there are also strange cases you may have a situation like this you know the packets are arriving almost like this and then going at you know this fashion as such and there are also situations you can you know assume something a model like this you know almost like this you know packets are let me just hold it properly in front of the camera yeah the packets are coming through this small funnel and then eventually going out of this you know very large funnel as such so this you can almost imagine a situation like this you know this is the case of uh, all your incoming packets from the internet or your uh, van link as such so it is coming through a very small channel but it is not going to be an issue even if this funnel is overfilled i mean what happens is uh, it is having enough bandwidth so essentially all the packets whichever is received is going to go inside and then it is going to pop out in the van uh, uh, port as such so this is what is going to happen the complexity starts always you know in this direction as such so uh, i mean to say like you know in this direction as such you have the van and then essentially uh, after all the processing is done it is going towards the you know uh, van link as such so you know this is the kind of uh, bottleneck we need to do some amount of research so what i am going to do is uh, i am going to show a first live demo with uh, a bucket of water i have added some amount of uh, red dye so that uh, you can uh, see properly in the camera so guys i am just uh, ready with my gear so let me just uh, show you i got this uh, you know uh, smallest uh, funnel in my stack of funnels so that i can just uh, do a quick demo so what i got is i got uh, i got here a bucket of water and then uh, i just uh, put some uh, red uh, fountain pen ink so that you know it can uh, you know capture the water better in the camera so i got this uh, a jar glass jar as well as uh, let me just show you <coughs> so i got this uh, you know tea cup so what happens is every time there is you know some amount of low threshold of data you know this is what somehow it passes through your uh, network stack so let me just pour this so it is not much there is not going to be any kind of you know spillage of you know or overflow of your data so whatever i pour you can see here it is just passing out through this 
small funnel so there is no question of uh, you know overflow of your data so no matter how much rate i put almost it is instantaneously going to pass through this uh, small funnel as well. so so as you can see here the more i put you know there is some amount of you know buffer level in this funnel as you can see here it is not you know let me just show you it is not something of this size or something like that i mean so there is some amount of you know you can think this is your like you know packet buffers so in linux you need to understand there is a, like a read memory write memory you know uh, uh, and then as well as you have some you know transmit queue and receive queue and stuff like that so sometimes you can uh, adjust these parameters in your uh, you know uh, proc uh, variables and then you can just adjust its length and uh, stuff like that so based on your uh, you know bandwidth you can adjust these figures and if you are dealing with some kind of high performance computing or or else uh, you know something like uh, 10 gbps uh, networks or something like that you can just uh, you know uh, uh, do these uh, you know settings and then you can fine tune your uh, device to performance uh, to give a better performance in such loads so what happens is you can just essentially you know increase or reduce this you know buffer capacity so that reflects your you know proc variables but sadly unfortunately the exit point is like your uh, bandwidth limit as i discussed in the whiteboard so essentially this is either going to be a 1 gbps network or this is going to be your 100 mbps network or this is going to be your van or internet speed so this is going to be constant so sadly as i showed you no matter how fast i pour eventually it is going to pa pass whatever i am pouring just like this let me just show you again if i pour very very slow it is just going to pass whatever i am pouring or if i am going if i am dumping very fast it is just going to get you know collected in this buffer region so this is what happens but everything is fine because there is no kind of you know overflow of this uh, you know uh, data as such so you can almost uh, imagine uh, the water molecules or water represents the bits and bytes of your uh, uh, you know packet data as such so let me just show the same thing with this uh, you know jar so let me just pour the water from this glass jar so this is a huge jar as you can see here so let me just hold it properly yeah so what happens is if i pour at a specific rate things are fine as you can see here but once i pour at much higher volume it is just going to overflow so which is just happened now and let me just show it again so let me just pour it yeah the overflow has just started as you can see here so this is what is the situation happens and and one more thing you can notice is once i'm done with pouring you can see here i'm done with pouring it is still continuing to pass through this funnel so this is also exactly happens in case if your buffers are very large you know you need to be very careful let me just keep these things aside let me just remove this gloves so this is what happens uh, you know in case uh, you are uh, you know sending data at a, you know higher rate and uh, you know there is a large amount of rx buffer or something like that or else rx write memory or something you know what happens is uh, the packets are going to be keep collected and after some time it is eventually going to uh, get that spillage or uh, the uh, you know uh, it is going to get buffer overrun and the packets are going to get anyway discarded as well. so that's what is the situation over here so primarily there is going to be the bottleneck which is like this exit point of this you know funnel so this is where you can uh, uh, sort of you know you can compress your data or you can optimize your data with any sort of van optimization strategy so this video is not specifically about van optimization strategies this is all about uh, doing the research as i said in my whiteboard in terms of how data 
uh, which is passing from higher bandwidth to lower bandwidth and you know what it has to go through so let me just show also something very weird you know if i you know kind of tip over this funnel and i try to pour in now you can understand the situation no matter at whichever rate i am pouring the outcomes is going to be the same as you know this uh, specific rate as so this is what essentially happens in your uh, any you know wi-fi router connected to internet and uh, no matter how fast your lan is is it's essentially going to be the internet is going to be the bottleneck and sometimes you should also understand uh, it is also quite useful to keep some sort of you know rate limit measure something like that and uh, and this way what you can do is uh, you can uh, strategize your qos and then you can do some amount of policing and then some amount of uh, you know uh, priority setting and stuff like that so that uh, you know your valuable data is passed through without any you know uh, without any problems as such so let me just uh, you know uh, show another demo and then uh, let me just explain uh, the same thing in a much you know different perspective i got couple of uh, fountain pens uh, these days i am just a little crazy about fountain pens and uh, just uh, uh, write all my you know project uh, uh, deadlines and to dos and project architecture specs and other stuff with these fountain pens so sometimes i use uh, my uh, parker pen and i got some more c collection of pens so sometimes i use this uh, parker pen and sometimes i use this uh, you know chinese uh, hero pen which is quite uh, popular in india and uh, i got also set of other expensive pens so for this demo i just want to show you know these pens so that uh, let me just explain the same situation happening in this you know case of these uh, pens also so why i got this uh, you know pens and uh, why i want to demonstrate is i just want to show you in case if you are also a fountain pen user you know you can well understand uh, let me just show you its uh, filling mechanism so it's a wonderful uh, fine tip parker pen so currently i just put a cartridge in this i also have uh, a sort of you know converter uh, piston converter so in this pen whenever i try to fill in the ink with the piston you know it almost instantaneously fills you know there is not much of any lag you know the, the moment you pull the piston it fills the ink but let me just show you something very strange happens you know with my other pen this is a hero pen uh, which is going to have this uh, you know bladder which is over here so this is something very strange you know what happens is every time i try to fill in from the bottle you know what happens is after as soon as i release this it is going to take some amount of time and it is going to draw the ink inside and then it is going to fill in so this is exactly the case almost like your uh, you know van to lan or lan to van uh, you know transition of your uh, uh, bandwidth as so here it is going to have this narrow channel so there is going to be some amount of you know resistance of the you know fluid flow as such. so same way it happens in your uh, van network and once it touches your uh, lan data uh, uh, or else van lan network you know you have huge bandwidth and then it is going to come inside so this is what it exactly happens but what i'm going to show you is i'm going to show you a proper a close-up demo with a uh, syringes and then couple of ink fountain pen bottles so that you can see live how this uh, you know uh, latency is affecting the bandwidth as such so you can see very much in live so this first demonstration is going to explain you about you know drop off packets and uh, you know congestion and uh, all that stuff you know surrounded between this you know transition of uh, high speed to low speed and uh, uh, and uh, things like that whereas the second demo is going to show you the problem involved in terms of the real latencies which are involved so here is the case again there are certain proc variables in the kernel space you you need to fine tune based on your you know network deployment and based on your network speeds and stuff like that usually the ubuntu or fedora distributions they have done the customization of these proc variables on a specific assumption and uh, sometimes uh, the default values are also set by the kernel team based on you know timeline basis i mean uh, it's been changed some time ago when we started to get 
1 Gbps networks quite often earlier it is fine tuned for 100 Mbps networks and much before that it is fine tuned for 10 Mbps networks whereas now since we have a Gbps network or gigabit network quite common you know the kernel parameters are fine tuned for that but not necessarily it is going to work in every case if you are having a very small uh, if you are building say for example a small Wi-Fi router or some sort of uh, say raspberry based Wi-Fi router or something or a raspberry based uh, Raspberry Pi based uh, network device or something, you know, this is a case you need to fine-tune those settings You can't use the same settings which is going to work in your, uh, you know, Intel uh, uh, 6 core or 8 core processor i7 uh, Processor and uh, this is a very tiny device and it is going to handle very tiny amount of uh, you know, bandwidth uh, di uh, you know bandwidth so you need to fine tune these settings so that you know it matches its hardware specifications it matches its uh, network specification and uh, so on so guys uh, here is my final demo in this demo i got this uh, uh, two insulin uh, syringes it is quite dangerous to use this syringe but it is still okay i just handle it extremely careful every time i use it to fill my fountain pen cartridges or fountain pens or such so this one is having the needle so i just have this safety cap as you can see here the needle is extremely uh, fine so this is also a very good example where you can understand the convergence of your you know fan network or your internet versus your huge you know LAN uh, bandwidth asset so this is a very good uh, uh, apparatus to explain this I also got a bottle of ink so that I can show you some live demo and on the other hand I have the similar uh, syringe over here and what I have done is I have chopped up this uh, needle part so that it is almost uh, it's having a very wide you know hole over here so this I use it almost uh, like a you know piston uh, 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 filler so that I can use it instead of any eyedropper or something to fill my fountain pen uh, you know red fountain pens so the unique thing about this is uh, it is not going to have any kind of resistance I'm just not wearing any uh, safety gloves so that I'm just okay if it you know um, spills somewhere so that I can later uh, clean it because I can't handle it properly with the gloves so this one is almost having no resistance so what happens is essentially if i pull the ink you know let me just show you so i'm trying to pull the ink it instantly comes inside the you know syringe as you can see here and if i just you know push this ink back to the bottle you know it instantly goes back to the bottle almost so it doesn't have any sort of resistance or any sort of uh, you know lag in terms of its you know transfer so this is what happens uh, if there is almost like equal amount of bandwidth in your uh, lan as well as your wan networks or your lan and internet networks whereas next comes the special case so let me just grab my other ink bottle yeah so this is my blue ink bottle which i use regularly for all my you know pens so let me just remove this safety cap so here is a case it is quite unique so it has some amount of ink in it so once i press this piston you know and then let me just hold it carefully once i press this piston and then hold it in one place it still continues to fall into the bottle so you can see here i'm just holding the piston i'm not pressing the piston anymore but still you can see here you know ink is getting spilled or ink is continued uh, in terms of uh, getting out of the syringe so same thing happens even if i you know pull this piston so let me just drain all this ink back to the bottle so as you can see here once i push it still continues to you know empty its contents inside the bottle so this is what it is quite strange because it has some amount of resistance due to this you know extremely narrow channel so same thing happens if i try to pull the ink into the syringe you know it takes some amount of time to fill see i have uh, removed my hands from this uh, i mean removed my fingers uh, from this uh, piston it is still continuing to fill this syringe so let me just show it once again so let me just pull this back so it as you can see here it is slowly pulling the ink up 
into the syringe it is still doing it so the gap inside the chamber is slowly narrowing and then due to the vacuum so this is what happens so this is exactly what happens you know there is a large amount of uh, you know let me just keep these things away okay? yeah so this is what happens every time there is there is large amount of uh, you know uh, lan bandwidth versus a very small uh, you know wan network or internet network you know you have essential barrier and uh, you have uh, a basic fundamental uh, limitation and uh, let's not confuse always uh, take tcp as example in case if you are doing now uh, based on these experiments uh, i have done various uh, live demos with live packets with rate limiting and then qas settings and as well as uh, you know directly hacking the kernel and stuff like that so as well as uh, even uh, the proc value settings and stuff like that so what happens is uh, every time you do those experiments you will notice uh, you know this barrier can be overcome in case if you limit your data passing through the channel so what happens is at a specific rate you can pass more amount of data so that happens with uh, any of the wan optimization uh, strategies it can be data compression data duplication and caching of files and stuff like this sometimes uh, you can do these things on certain kinds of data sometimes you can't do these things on certain other kinds of data especially voip data assets. so voip is a very unique case it needs high priority at the same time you can't much optimize your voip data anymore as so it is already pre optimized and uh, this is what happens and uh, you can also see the scenario where <laughs> network stack in case if it is uh, you know congested it is going to have the pile of uh, packets and then eventually it is going to spill out of the stack and it is going to get uh, you know discarded uh, into the system and uh, uh, into the os or whatever and you can also notice another case uh, just the way i have described in the whiteboard one side you may have a channel something like this you know a site may have something like that when there where your van is so small and it is so narrow and then you may have another site something like this where in which your van network is almost as same as uh, or similar to your uh, lan network speeds as such. so in this case the lag is going to exist still but it is going to be the lag due to this you know convergence point in these cases uh, you know you can do something very unique where in which you can rate limit it at this end at a strategic way so that it won't simply the packets won't get pumped here and gets congested over here and essentially it is going to get dropped over here once you know the packets goes from you know this end to the other end and uh, to you know to uh, cope up with these kind of issues you can strategically rate limit at the higher uh, uh, bandwidth you know network especially packets which are destined towards this network so let me just uh, pull my whiteboard and uh, let me just discuss about this special case and then i can just uh, conclude this episode <laughs> so i'm back with this uh, whiteboard so you know the case which i explained with the syringes uh, just now it is almost similar to this uh, you have this you know case where one side the wan network is much higher speed than the other two sides in this case uh, you can strategically configure where in which packets which are destined toward this side or this side uh, you can little bit rate limit over here so that unnecessarily the packets won't go all the way and then it is going to get you know dropped somewhere in the middle and if it is not essentially going to get dropped here but somewhere in the middle it is essentially going to get dropped because of this you know basic limitation in the you know bandwidth over uh, at that site's location and when you do such uh, modifications uh, you know, don't uh, just assume there is a case of only tcp alone it depends on your specific uh, you know traffic uh, types which you are going to use sometimes it is if it is voip it is udp intensive sometimes uh, if it is a voip or to and fro communication or uh, some sort of uh, multimedia to and fro communication it can be a live video discussion or something like that you want to discuss from one office employees with the remote office employees or your you know the remote oil rig so i want to give this as a very good example because not essentially you know the offices these days which are connected with the landlines are going to have very good internet connectivity but you have a fundamental issue with these oil rigs sometimes on this platform there can be some you know sizable amount of crew may be working inside or sometimes it can be some sort of you know 
cruise ships or else uh, some uh, uh, it can be an in-flight Wi-Fi or a, uh, you know business jet or something like that so what happens is every time this issue happens you need to analyze and you need to do research not just on TCP level TCP is quite crazy because it has this uh, three-way handshake and it has this its own uh, congestion uh, uh, congestion uh, 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 routines and stuff like that so TCP is quite strange and uh, it is not good and advisable to do a specific research using TCP I suggest you you can use uh, test uh, ICMP packets with uh, full MTU sizes to and fro and then test UDP packet with uh, you know uh, real wipe data which is like few hundred bytes of uh, you know packet sizes or else it can be some sort of synthetic UDP packets with the full uh, MTU sized uh, <laughs> packets or, or else even sometimes you can also do uh, testing on jumbo packets and stuff like that so using all these combinations you can do extensive research on cases like this so that's all guys uh, for this episode as I said earlier this is not uh, um, uh, one of my regular episodes where I just talk with some whiteboard and then uh, you know conclude my video or else i pull you guys to my desktop and then show some live demo in this case i don't want to deal uh, something with some you know tools and other stuff which you uh, commonly use in a system i just want to show some live demo try to get inspired and try to learn things from the nature and then uh, you know you can implement these concepts and you can find out a solution based on these uh, concepts and then you can implement into your uh, network stack and you can implement into your basic optimization strategy in case if you are a software developer or an architect it is up to you how you design your you know networking stack and you optimize your buffers packet buffers you optimize your memory buffers and and optimize your code and optimize your latency and performance of your code and stuff like this whereas in case if you are a systems admin since i am a guy who worked both as a systems admin for few months even i worked in night shifts and i did some amount of firefighting and stuff like that so at the same time majority of my career i worked as a you know protocol architect and now i work as a consultant and technical architect so with this experience uh, i have both sites i have seen as a systems uh, uh, software engineer a network programmer as well as uh, systems administrator or uh, you know network administrator so i have done almost both of these roles quite extensively so if you are a network analyst or a network uh, architect or you are a network uh, uh, admin or something of that sort you know you can take this uh, teachings and then you can optimize your QoS strategy you can optimize your you know network flow and networking strategy so that you can avoid some amount of congestion you know there is no point in terms of firing this entire data which is destined towards this you know uh, low bandwidth links you can instead uh, do some amount of rate limit over here and then conserve your bandwidth for something else which is even more important and you can give a sort of you know shared um, uh, network experience for many users over here this can be your you know corporate headquarters and uh, this can be your uh, you know branch office and this can be your on-site uh, offices as such. This can be even a construction site or this, as I said, it can be oil rig or else it can be a Wi-Fi, in-flight Wi-Fi or it can be a marine internet or something of that chance. So that's all guys so for this episode. Please do post your comments in YouTube. I'm not a strict YouTuber and uh, I don't want to, uh, you know, uh, do things like, you know, to gain views in YouTube or uh, to get likes in YouTube or subscribers. I'm more focused towards sharing my thoughts and ideas. I am a hardcore technical consultant and uh, an architect and a researcher by profession. And I would like to, you know, share my uh, research to the world in these uh, 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 videos, in this kind of videos and this kind of a platform. So that's all about it. So thank you very much for watching this video. Have a nice day.